Hello, welcome to the Real Internet Come For the YouTube channel. My name is Antoinette Smith and I'm your author. Remember to get your books, get your books, get your books, people. Some of them are on sale at Barnes & Noble, Amazon, Google, Apple iTunes, Walmart.com, Target.com, Books of Mary, Kobo, Indigo, and Tales. All of them come in paperback and digital version. Get your copies today. Do not forget about my newest book, my new book release, My Jesus Experience, Our Journey. It comes with this own bookmark. Do not forget about my newest release, Life After Losing the Child. It comes with its own bookmark. And they both come in paperback and digital version. We will be reading from the final chapter of this book. And it is titled, chap, it is chapter 10, titled Acceptance, Breathe, Live Your Life. Acceptance is almost a foreign word in today's society. We don't want true acceptance, pure truth. We want our version of acceptance and what we deem is truth. We don't accept things for how they really are. We turn and twist them to fit into our small frame of mind, our way of thinking, our perception. But when it comes to death, to loss, you have you must accept the real truth about the matter. Acceptance. An act of consenting to receive or undertake something offered. The action or process of being received as adequate or suitable. Typically to be admitted into a group that is the Oxford Language Dictionary. Breathe, to take air into your lungs and then expel it, especially as a regu regular physiological process. Take a short break, give rest, relief, regain consciousness to give off a sense of something. That is from the word hippo. Live, remain alive, to have life, to have permanent residency somewhere, to inhabit, to reside, to survive, to persevere, to continue, stay, dwell, abide, occupy. And that is from the Oxford Language Dictionary. In the process of dealing with grief, dealing with loss, at some point you have to accept that your child will never come home again, that they are gone from this earth realm. I myself think acceptance was the hardest stage for me. I knew to some extent that my son was deceased, but my, my heart knew it, my body knew it, everyone around me knew it, but I wouldn't allow my mind to fully receive it. I carried guilt, shame, questions, doubts, hurts, stresses daily with me for six years. No one was allowed to enter that place of my hurt, despair, anger, resentment for six years. I allow my children and their fathers to deal with their grief their way and allow me to deal with mine my way. I knew my grief process was spilling into other areas of my life, but I told myself these people have no idea the miracle these people have no idea the miracle it is for me to be in this in their presence, to be functioning in the capacity in which I am, to be in a sound mind that I am. I knew it was only by the grace of God. Nothing in my own strength could make me operate as such. It was pure anointing, pure grace at work in me and through me. In, si in year six, while I was in a shut-in, the Lord began to touch this area of my hurt I had. Not even he was allowed to enter into this place. I had walked with Jesus long enough to know he is a gentleman and he doesn't force himself on anyone. He is patient. He is kind. He will wait for an invitation. <clears throat> I was approaching the sixth year of the loss of my son when I received a phone call from my daughter again about choosing a headstone for his grave, about visiting his grave, about celebrating his birthday and his departure. They would do this every year, and I would say the same things. Y'all choose. I would just agree. They would argue, no, we want you to choose. Their father called me in sorrow many times. I would listen and remain unmoved, untouched by their request. I wasn't ready to deal with the truth. I wasn't ready to open the door of my pain. I knew I was a walking time bomb waiting to explode. I felt it. People around me felt it. My stress level was high. They just thought it was my career, traveling, working, writing, not resting, not eating properly, and I owe no one an explanation at all. I am how I am. Thank God that I am better than before and not worse was my private thoughts. But God thought and knew differently. He had another plan. He had healing. He had peace. 
He had comfort. He had understanding. He had answers to all my questions and concerns. After these last phone, after these last phone calls, after this last phone call, I was very upset. I mean, angry with my daughter because she went too far with her words. So I said to her, I will not be attending any event y'all plan, come up with or put together. I am hanging up my phone because I don't want to say anything I will regret and can't take back. I hung up my phone on her. I didn't accept calls from my other children or my mother for some weeks. They were all against me. They were all trying to make me deal with death their way and in their timing. Just leave me alone. I had left you alone during your process. Allow me to complete mine. I was saying to myself, I can't grieve properly because I was trying to take care of you and y'all children, not well, not well, your well-being to a point I was becoming I myself to from stress. So about four days later, I was still very angry with my uh with my prayer partner, Matthew Gibson called. We were prayer partners for over two years now. He knew many things about me and helped me pray and helped me pray through a lot of things. I answered my phone. Hello. I answered my phone. Hello. He immediately said, what's wrong? I said nothing. He said, no, indeed. Come on. Tell me something has you in an uproar. What is it? And I'm not taking no for an answer. Wait a minute. No for an answer. I told him the situation about my son and my daughter's phone call. I admitted to him that it is a very touchy subject that I don't want to talk in detail about because of the guilt, the hurt and the shame. He said, wow, well, this is perfect timing because I called you to say that Apostle David E. Taylor is in Israel right now at the well and wall, and he is asking all of us to submit our prayer request. This is the perfect place to place your prayer so that you can get peace, get healing, get closure. I am submitting it to him right now. He began to praise God in advance. I had already begun to cry. A weight was lifting as I talked about the deepest, my deepest hurt. Deepest pain, deepest loss. Nothing nothing I had gone through in my life compared to the loss of my son. Not the rape, the molestation, the domestic abuse, the drug abuse, the abandonment, the being and left for dead, the loss of brothers, fathers, grandmothers, nothing, nothing could compare to this deep, dark loss. But God knew all about it. Jesus had the power to heal me. In Psalms 147.3, he heals the brokenhearted and binds up their wounds. The spirit of the Lord is upon me because he has anointed me to preach good tidings to the poor. He has sent me to heal the brokenhearted and to proclaim liberty to the captives and to the opening of the prison to those that are bound. That is Isaiah 61.1. People, the only way a broken heart will get healed is if Jesus heals it. You can't heal a broken heart. That's a job only for Jesus. So I surrendered my will, my hurts. I cried, Jesus, please heal my broken heart. Please give me closure of my son's death. I had to be, I had been, wait a minute. I had not been back to my son's graveside since I buried him six years ago. I had never gone to my father's grave either. This was the only way I could maintain some form of peace in my mind, even if it was false peace. I could only try to help. I could only try to keep my head above water daily and not drown. I lived many years of my life holding my breath, waiting on the next bad thing to happen, the next crisis to occur, to be added to the crisis I'm already living in, to hold my breath. Wait a minute. To hold my wait a minute, to hold my breath, looking for the next tragedy experience to happen to me. I told my prayer partner I had felt like I was always holding my breath and I could never breathe, never relax, never to be at peace, in comfort, no matter how hard I try. Whatever I say to myself, whatever words have been spoken over me, whatever promises God gives, I don't feel at peace to resolve or resolve totally in my being. I am not fully convinced that I will live the life God promised me. When, I mean, when does that happen to, when does that happen for me? When will I ever be happy, be totally free, be joyous for real in my whole being? When, when, when will I die? Will I be, when I die, will I ever be free then? 
He said, sis, the Lord knows and hears you. He said, you have done well. You can rest from your labor. Nothing else you need to do. Nothing else you need to change. He's sending you help. Help is on the way. You just rest. You will have dreams. You will have a peaceful sleep. And I want to hear all about it. <clears throat> we prayed and hung up. Three days later, I was awoke. I was awoke at 4 a.m. praying and worshiping. When 6 a.m. came, I received a message from my spiritual father, Apostle David E. Taylor of Joshua Media Ministry International. He said, Good morning, daughter. I love you. And when I read the message, I felt love hit my heart. It opened my heart and I responded and said, good morning, Father. I love you too. And I felt love leave my heart. I was already on my knees and I fell on the floor and I wept because for the first time in all of my 42 years of life, I actually felt love enter and leave my heart. I wept for weeks after this experience. And the Lord gave me this scripture, Proverbs 423, keep the heart. Keep your heart with all diligence, for out of it flows springs the issues of life. Later that day, I called all my children and my mother and told them that I love them. And I felt my love for them leave my heart. My heart was free. I was loved and I felt love, true love, real love. I stayed and stayed before Jesus and the Father to experience more love. Called my prayer partner with great news, weeping as I told him. I wept for weeks. It was great. It was wonderful and still wonderful. Once you feel and, and sense God's love for you and Jesus heals you, nothing else matters but their love, their peace, their comfort. This was in May of 2018. In September of 2018, at JMI Rosh Hashanah Yom Kippur service and dinner, during the worship service, I was worshiping and singing, asking God to cleanse me, purge me in this season, bless me for the next 12 months. And with my eyes closed, Prophetess Kathleen Woods of JMMI put, put her hands on my ears and began to pray in tongue in my ears. I began to weep. And all of a sudden, I felt Jesus touch me on the top of my head and I hit the floor. He completely healed, delivered me from all the guilt and shame of my son's death. When Jesus touches you, you're touched. Now, somehow, now, somehow, wait a minute, not sure how long I was out. But that's not important. I've been slain many times in the spirit. But Jesus touched, healed, and delivered me from all of the stain of my son's death. I embraced his departure. The Lord told me to, the Lord told me he took my son. That's why I could not allow those young men to be charged with his death. But they must pay for their acts of crime as they, as they, it, at, and, but they must pay for the acts of crime as he preserves their lives in prison. I understood that prison is a saving grace for many and a lifestyle and a life and a lifesaver for most unknowingly unaware of God's protection from death. So I never shed another tear for the loss of my son, my child. I chose to live my life to the fullest. I chose to breathe. I mean, really breathe. Inhale and exhale. I let go and I let God. I am truly, absolutely living my best life. I am happy, joyous, and free in every area. Really free in my heart, my mind, my personal life, family life, finances, ministry. Whom the Son sets free is free indeed. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jehovah. Thank you, Holy Spirit, for leading and guiding me into all truths. I am happily married to the greatest husband on earth, my king, my pillar, my best friend, my life partner, my business partner, Mr. Alua Bimbi God David Alusha La. Today we have been successfully married for 13 months. Glory be to God in the highest. God has answered my every prayer and promises from childhood. He has given me a life I never imagined. It's exceedingly abundantly above anything I could ever ask, think about, or imagine. Please allow Jesus to heal and deliver you from the loss of your child. Let him take you, make you into something you never imagined or dreamed you could or could be. Allow him to give you a life so you can live to the greatest, so you can live the greatest life he has planned for you. A life of love, joy, peace, comfort. Yes, your child is gone, but not forgotten. Live your life, live life for you, them, and your family. You have left with. Thank you and God bless you. That will end.
this book. Remember, this is Life After Losing a Child. Remember to get your copies. Remember, if you know anyone that have lost a loved one, have lost a child or sibling or anything, get this book for them. Christmas is coming up. It'll be a nice Christmas gift. It's only $14.95. So thank you. Continue to watch these videos. I will be back on next week reading new books. I got to get my other books. So remember, until we meet again, God gets the glory and I tell the story. Goodbye.